Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you with a fresh take on life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Oh. 
wants to the hungry and the poor that we may live out truth and justice and grace let us pray to the lord let us pray to the lord in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word that you nourish our souls with your body and blood let us pray to the lord let us pray to the lord God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading on this Holy Trinity Sunday comes from the very beginning of the Bible, from the book of Genesis, chapter 1. And in chapter 1, we hear of this God, this God who is both spirit and presence, hovering over creation, bringing order to chaos. And he uses this wonderful Hebrew word, for the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is called Ruach. Can you get a ch in your voice? Ruach, that is the Spirit of God that hovered and brought order and life to creation. So let us hear the story of creation on this Holy Trinity Sunday. The Bible is the story of God's love. Let's open it up and hear how much God loves us. Before God created the world, there was nothing. There was nothing at all except God. On the first day of creation, the wind of God blew. Whish, whoosh, swoosh. God said, let there be light. Crackle, boom, bang. There was light. God saw that the light was good, then split. God divided the light and the darkness into light and day. On the second day, God said, let there be a sky. Pillow, billow, puff. There was a sky. God saw that the sky was good. On the third day, God said, let there be water and dry land. Drip, drop, plunk. There was water. Crackle. Crunch, snap, there was dry land. God saw that the water and land were good. Then God said, let there be plants and trees. Rumble, rustle, pop, 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 pop. There were plants and trees. God saw that the plants and trees were good. On the fourth day, God said, let there be a sun and a moon and stars. Glimmer, shimmer, shine. There was a sun and a moon and thousands of stars. God saw that the sun and the moon and the stars were good. On the fifth day, God said, let there be sea animals that swim and birds that fly. Wiggle, 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 splish and splash. There were sea animals. 
flutter, putter, tweet, tweet, tweet. There were birds. God saw that the sea animals and birds were good. On the sixth day, God said, let there be animals of every kind on the earth. Growl, prowl, snort. There were animals with fur. Skitter, scatter, creep. There were bugs, slither, slink, hop, hop, hop. There were reptiles. God saw that the animals and bugs and reptiles were good. Then God said, let there be people on earth. Blink, wink, hiccup. There were people on earth. God saw that the people were good. God saw that the people were very good. On the seventh day, God said, it's time to rest. Phew, phew. <sighs> God and all creation rested. So I want you to go outside into God's creation. I want you to look around and see all that God has made today. Say a prayer. Thank God for all of creation. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians 13th chapter, verses 11 through 13. We hear these words of St. Peter every Sunday in the greeting spoken by the pastor at the beginning of worship. Like many parts of worship, there is a Trinitarian thread that is woven through all we do in worship. What we do in worship is an invitation into the mystery of God among us, a time of gratitude for all God has done, and a call to go live for others as God lives for us all. St. Paul writes, finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. important and important news or important stories are super important and they're things that we want to share with others if they're important and if you know me you know I love to tell stories so I'm gonna tell you a quick story my oldest son Byron at his 10th birthday party we were sitting inside the house at a kitchen table right next to a window like this there's six seven boys there I don't remember and they're eating their birthday cake and it's pretty dark in the house it's completely dark outside and I snuck out the front door, ran around the house, came up to the back window where they were sitting, and there was just one little light on, and I came up, and I slammed my hands, and I screamed as loud as I could on the window, and they all jumped. Cake went flying through the air, drinks were spilled. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but 
It was such an amazing experience. Once they realized that it wasn't a monster or a boogeyman, they were laughing so hard. Why am I telling you this story? These guys are all now 26, 27 years old. I could go into HEB right now and see one of them. 16 years later, and they would bring up that story. When something is important, it gets shared over and over and over. Which brings us to today's story. Jesus is getting ready to ascend into heaven. He's been crucified. He's resurrected. He's been on earth for quite a while after the resurrection. And he's finally getting ready to ascend into heaven. And he is telling his disciples that you need to go out and spread the word about Jesus. And what did he say to them? He said to the disciples, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And that brings me to this board. What is a disciple versus what is an apostle? A disciple is a person who is a follower of Christ. If you're watching this video, if you believe in Jesus and everything that he's done for you, then you are a disciple who's wanting to learn more about him. An apostle is a person who is sent out to deliver the message of Christ. So right now, as I deliver this message to you, some would say that I'm being an apostle. I'm also a disciple because every time I pick up my Bible or sit in someone else's class, I'm an active learner in reference to the Word of God. And that brings me to one of my favorite subjects, if you know me, it's math. Think about this. Jesus told the disciples to go out and share the good word. If each of us, starting with me, told two people a week, and they each told two people, look at that, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, in 10 days, if I started this and told two people about Jesus, and each of them told two people, in 10 days, 1,024 people would have heard that word. If you went way back on this globe, globes are so awesome. I loved globes when I was a kid. Right here is Israel. And that's what the disciples did. They started in Jerusalem, and they went to Judea and Samaria, and then they went all over the world to spread God's word. And that's what Jesus asked them to do as he was getting ready to ascend into heaven. Is Don't keep this great news a secret. Go out and share this with everybody else. And that takes me to Texas. Look right here. Yeah, you can't see it, but that's Marble Falls, Texas. So Jesus is telling each of us to go out and share that good news. Don't keep it to yourself in your bedroom. Go to your school. Go to the community. Go to everywhere in Marble Falls and Texas and other places and share that good news. I have a challenge for you, and that challenge is today or this week to text three to five people and telling them to simply on the text say, Jesus loves you. That's it. That's sharing God's good news. Uh, and speaking of sharing, I have a gift. I love gifts. And this gift is what Jesus is sharing with us. When we share his word with others, he is sharing the ultimate gift. And on this cross... I don't know if you can see it because of the camera, but it says the word grace. And grace means forgiveness. And every time we make a mistake, we are forgiven. And that's what's so amazing about Jesus. That's what's so amazing about the great gospel and the news that we're to share with others. That even if you make a mistake, you will be saved because of grace. So, really excited about this lesson. And I really want to challenge you to text Three to five people, and if you don't have a phone, then you get your mom or dad and use their phone to text three to five people and just simply say something like, Jesus loves you. Okay, I'm going to close this in a prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing day. We ask that you do everything that you can to help this world today, to help the United States and some of the challenges that we are facing from COVID-19 to some of the... Uh, situations around the country and cities where things are going on. Lord, we ask that you bring peace to all of these different communities, and we ask that you lift up each of us here in Marble Falls at St. Peter's Lutheran to go out 
and to share your good news with others and not keep it inside as a secret. Lord, we ask all of this in your son's name. Something that was planned many, many weeks ago was for our presiding bishop, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, to provide a sermon, a message for all the churches of the ELCA across the country on Holy Trinity Sunday. So in a moment, you'll hear from her, but just know that churches, thousands of churches across our country will be hearing her message, will be reflecting on her words together with you today a sign of the spirit that pulls us together, that reminds us of the unity that we have in Christ in this time, uh, this unity that is inviting us to go out and restore and heal and bring wholeness to our world. So God be with you, good folks of St. Peter's and people out on the internet. May God be with you this week. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a, hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, 
the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God, and God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd the breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property, but we ask that the, the Spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship. 
within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. May, May the, the peace, peace of the Lord be with you. There you go. The peace of the Lord be with you. 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 No place I'd rather be. No place I'd
Let us pray for all that God has given us to use and to share for the life of the world. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, neighbor and community, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Please join me in professing our faith. Christian, what do you believe? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear God, please be with us today and every day here in our local church. Uh, and the churches around Marble Falls. Please be with our members and our community as we are going through this very tough time. Uh, please help us to understand, help us to decide what to do, to do what is right. Lord, please be with the global church as well, um, nationwide, worldwide. Please give us the wisdom and give us the patience and be with our church leaders as they lead us in how we should be reacting to this big situation that we're in. Amen. God, we praise you and give you thanks for the creation of the world. We ask for grace and discernment in stewardship of the gifts you have given to us, and specifically for discernment in ways to conserve our planet. We ask for peace and healing for those who have been affected by the coronavirus. We pray for comfort and the joy of the resurrection for the families of those who have died. We pray for grace and understanding as we follow your commandment to love our neighbors as ourselves. You have created all humankind, men and women, in your own image, and we pray for forgiveness and grace as we sometimes fall short in treating all men and women with the respect and love which each and every person deserves. We pray for wisdom. We give you thanks for the times in which we live. We are joyful, O Lord, that these are the days when America and all the peoples of the world will begin to recognize that racism has no place in your creation. And we ask for your help and guidance as we love our neighbors as ourselves each and every day from this day forward. Remind us daily of the words of Jesus Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Rejoice and be glad. Great is your reward in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this day, we also pray for Jake Boyd, for Ruby Sanders, for David Ping, for Carol Stiles, for Angie Atkinson, for Carolyn Selman, for Joe and Nadine Leitze, for Marcy Wildey, for Jim Dupree, for Faith Trapp, for Philip Sawyers, for Carson Rose Wolf, for Gil Debner, Mike Knigge, Craig Fields, Julia Wrights, and Lincoln Cortez. And we pray for Donna Nelson and the loss of her grandson, Drew Franklin, for the Brodigam family and the loss of Jerry Brodigam, for the Holly family and the loss of Don Holly. And at this time, I invite you to lift up with your voice or in your hearts other people or things in the world that are on your heart. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Make us bold, merciful God, to address you as our Abba as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before our blessing and dismissal this Holy Trinity Sunday, we have a special prayer for the power of the Spirit among the people of God for you all. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission, that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing this day. The Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen.
Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And we will.